What's up guys, Garrett with Self Taught Dev. Today we're going over how to make your first API request to ChatGPT slash OpenAI. So first things first, you are gonna need Node.js installed. If you don't have that installed, just Google Node.js, um, download the files, install it, should be pretty straightforward, or type in how to install Node.js in Google and something will come up to help you. I'm not gonna go over that, but to check that you have it installed, just type Node-V in your terminal and it should spit out whatever version you're on. We don't need to be on the same version as long as you've got Node installed, you should be good. Next, make sure you're in whatever directory or folder that you want to do this project in. And we are going to type npm init-y. And this is going to initialize a package JSON for us so we can install dependencies. Uh, next, we are actually going to install our dependencies. So we'll say npm i open AI. And this is the package that basically lets us make requests to open AI. And then there's one other file or one other package we need. We'll need .env. And this is going to allow us to have an environment variable folder and import that into our main folder. But first, let me take a sip of coffee from my mug here. What's that? Oh, you like my mug? It says, I just keep Googling stuff and it keeps working. Available in the self-taught dev merch shop today, along with our, I don't have commitment issues, I have merge conflicts mug as well. Make great Christmas presents for yourself. Go check it out now in the description. All right, let's go ahead and open this. So we'll say code dot. And as long as you have VS code, this will open the current directory in VS code. You can drag that over here. And we need to add two more files. So we'll say touch index.js. That's going to be the main file we write our code in. We're also going to touch a .env file, and that's going to be the file we keep our environment variables in. Speaking of environment variables, let's go grab those. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit in here so we can see this better. Move that over to the side, and then let's go get our API key for OpenAI. I'll have the link to this in the description, but it's platform.openai.com, and then that should bring you to the docs overview page. If you're not signed in, there should be a login or create account button up here in the top right. So either create an account or log in. Once you're there, go to your little image, go to your profile, and then we'll go to API keys. It sets up a project and organization for you, which we're gonna get those keys in a moment. Uh, let me delete this, because we're just gonna create a new one. We'll click on the create new secret key. We'll call this GPT-Tutorial. Obviously, you would want to name this uh, something related to whatever project you're working on for this. Um, and then for project, we'll select our default project. And we'll click on Create Secret Key. Click on Copy. Go back to our ENV file. And then we'll call this OpenAI underscore API underscore key equals that. Obviously, I'm going to delete this project by, uh, before I publish this video, so just FYI. And then we'll click on Done. Once you click on Done, you can never copy that API key again unless you delete the key and create a new one. So just FYI for that as well. Next thing we're gonna need is the organization ID. So we'll go to General, we'll copy our organization ID, and then we'll make another variable called org underscore ID and set it to that. And then the last one we're gonna need is the project key. So we'll go to projects, we'll copy our ID, go back in here, and then we'll make a project underscore ID equals that. Now you, now there is not a free tier of this. Um, you will need to throw a few bucks on your account. Um, I threw 10 bucks on, I've been playing with it all yesterday and this morning, and I've still used only less than one cent. Uh, just kind of depends on what model you're using and how much, how many requests you are making, but go to billing, add payment details, throw a few dollars on the account, uh, go to limits, make sure you set a limit so you don't create some infinite loop accidentally and blow up your account. But you will need to do both of those things. Otherwise, it will just say you don't have access when we try to make the API request. Go to index.js and then we can start writing our code to make the API request. Uh, we did not change this to type module. So make sure you add that line to your package JSON. So we can use imports. We're going to import open AI from open AI. And then we're also going to import 
env from dot env. And the OpenAI is what, again, what we need to make API requests to OpenAI and dot env is just going to import our environment variables for security. You don't want to write them directly in your file. Um, I mean, if you write them directly in your file and you push it to GitHub, you're going to have exposed API keys, which is going to be an issue. So you use something like process.env. whatever API key as a variable, and then you can safely push it to GitHub. Uh, just make sure you don't push your .env file to GitHub, obviously. Uh, next, we're going to do .env.config, and then we'll say const open AI, new open AI. And then we're going to have an object and we're going to have the API key. We're going to have the organization. And we're going to have the project. And then we need to give these the API keys uh, or the keys from our environment variable. So we'll say process.env.openAI underscore API underscore key. Just make sure you match whatever you have in your environment variable folder. We'll say process.env.org underscore ID. And then we'll say process.env. Um, I think it was project underscore ID. And then we should be good with that. So that's going to set up the connection we need to make requests. Next, we're going to say const um, communication equals await open AI dot chat dot completions dot create. So every time we make a request to this endpoint, um, it is it's stateless. So we need to maintain a memory of our text locally. Um, you can do that whatever way floats your boat. You can have a dot txt file that you update every time you get a response from GPT. Uh, but I mean, you will need to maintain a log of your chats locally if you want to continue the same conversation thread. I'm not going to get super deep into that this video. Uh, first thing we're going to need to pass in here is the model. So I like to use GPT-40 because that's the most recent, but older models are less expensive. Just go to the pricing page and you can kind of decide which model you want to use. Uh, next thing we're going to do here is give it a messages array. And then inside here, we're going to have the first object is going to have the role of system. And then we'll have a content. And what the system role is doing is allowing us to give GPT kind of an overarching instruction set so like how we want it to behave so for this particular instance we'll say you are pretending to be a human um, any uh, any suggestion that you're a bot is offensive and should be refuted so we're gonna have him try to pretend that he's a human Next, we're going to add another object here, and the role for this one is going to be user. And this tells ChatGPT that, or uh, GPT, that this message has come from the user. The third role we can use is assistant, and it, it assumes any role assistant came from itself. Um, but we'll say content is just going to be, hey, how are you? Are you a bot? And then we'll grab communication. We'll say console.logcommunication.choices.message. And then we should be good to go. Let's open up our terminal and see if this works. We'll just do node index.js. So that's going to run the file we currently have in node. And it seems I used an old API key, so I needed to update that. But we'll do node index.js, and we get a message back saying, "Hey, I'm just like you, and I'm here to chat and help you with help with whatever you need. How can I assist you today?" Now, I would have liked it to have tried to convince me that it's not a bot harder, but that's kind of more on the prompt engineering side versus the API request side. But yeah, that is how you would make a your initial request to GPT. If you want more information on this, let me know in the comments below and I will continue making AI related content like this. Give me a thumbs up if you learned something and hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all the content I'm putting out. If you do want to come hop in the Discord or the self-taught dev subreddit, links to both of those are in the description below. And then again, make sure you 
pick up your self-taught dev merch in the shop today. A link for that is in the description as well. I think that's about it for this one, you guys. So I will catch you in the next one. Peace. One.